coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Elon hints at Friday's Starship launch. Uncrewed R-22 flight test campaign conducted. Even more Rotor X woes. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talend Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Elon hints at Friday's Starship launch. Friday may turn out to be an exciting day, with SpaceX boss Elon Musk confirming that he, quote, was just informed that approval to launch should happen in time for a Friday launch, end quote. Paperwork holdups have been extensive since the April 2023 inaugural orbital test flight of SpaceX's Starship platform, the largest, most powerful rocket yet conceived of by humankind, though it proved something less than a resounding success. But since then, the FAA and other governmental permitting processes have dragged on and on, until, hopefully, now. The test's true objectives are simple. Allow the vehicle to complete staging between the main booster and its second stage, and get that second stage up to an orbital velocity before splashing it down in the Pacific. SpaceX explains, quote, Starship's first flight test provided numerous lessons learned that directly contributed to several upgrades to both the vehicle and ground infrastructure to improve the probability of success on future flights. The second flight test will debut a hot stage separation system and a new electronic thrust vector control system for super heavy Raptor engines, in addition to reinforcements to the pad foundation and a water-cooled steel flame deflector, among many other enhancements." End quote. Coming up after the break, LaCrosse catches gatecrasher aboard private jet. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. LaCrosse catches gate crasher aboard private jet. Some excitement struck the tarmac at Wisconsin's La Crosse Regional Airport when someone drove a vehicle through the gates and stole aboard a private jet. There were staff aboard the aircraft when the unknown forced their way in, but the crew made an escape. The local department had a reason to respond with their armored Bearcat, which they parked in front of the aircraft while employees at the airport helped officers disable the plane, most likely pulled the GPU given the circumstances, and apprehended the felon. Samson Sky changes bases to larger R&D. Samson Sky headed into this fall with a move to a larger, better equipped research facility right before beating previous records with a mile-long test flight. Work on their convertible flying car, the Switchblade, has continued at full pace throughout the year, but worsening weather across the country means that those perfect sunny day flight tests in Moses Lake, Washington, aren't going to be around much longer. This week, the team managed to see their testbed aircraft fly the pattern, continuing to evaluate the handling and aerodynamics of their flying car prototype. Cargo Jet Sells Off B-757 Freighters CargoJet will be easing up on its plans to continue converting Boeings to freighter specifications, in addition to selling off a few of its Boeing 757s. The move is just another in recent ripples throughout the air cargo market that betray a cooling off throughout the industry. 
Cargo Jet's competitors have been on a similar downsizing mission, like Air Transport Services Group parking six of its passenger widebodies and scaling down conversions by three. Cargo Jet is doing the same, listing four of its surplus 757s despite their relative freshness. ALPA testifies on close calls before Congress. ALPA urged Congress to improve aviation safety on all fronts, building on outcry from recent issues in the public eye. The FAA has been engaged in a flurry of activity, looking to improve the safety of ATC and the terminal environment following a couple high-profile near hits between large aircraft. In supporting the wider industry effort, ALPA President Jason Ambrosi called for improvements to now-proven additions to the industry, like flight profile optimization, standard terminal automation replacement system remote surveillance displays, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast out gear, and next-gen equipment. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Uncrewed R-22 flight test campaign conducted. Rotor Technologies has completed the first uncrewed flight test campaign of a full-scale civilian helicopter. The campaign was flown with two Rotor R-220Y autonomous helicopters. The R-220Y is an experimental platform based on the popular Robinson R-22 two-seat helicopter with seats, pilot controls, and instrument panel removed, and all functions of the helicopter automated by Rotor's technology. Two R-220Ys logged more than 20 hours of flight time and over 80 hours of engine run time during the flight campaign. These flights successfully proved Rotor's flight control systems, autonomous hover and velocity modes, and vision-based perception systems. The campaign also developed the aircraft's long-distance flight capability through in-flight testing of long-range radio equipment and cellular LTE communication links, although all flights were conducted over a limited radius within direct line of sight of a ground control station. Rotor founder and CEO Dr. Hector Shu said, quote, this is a major milestone towards fully autonomous flight and testament to our ability to develop autonomy that will be safe and reliable enough for utility and passenger operations. Our AI pilot system is already expert level at tasks like precision flight control and navigation in poor visibility conditions, and we're increasing its capabilities every day." End quote. After these messages, even more Rotor X woes noted. Welcome back. Even more Rotor X woes noted. New details are coming forth showing that the Rotor X situation continues to decline. A New Jersey company has sued Rotor X for nearly $200,000 in a contractual dispute where they apparently provided some level of financing, while Rotor X boss Don Shaw and his company did not follow through. The Aero News Network continues to take calls each day from customers of the defunct helicopter kit operation, in which they state that they paid as much as full price and then received little or nothing significant in return. The previously reported bankruptcy has been denied due to legal errors and has not yet been refiled. We continue to get reports from former staffers who assert that they had gone without pay for several months and that withholding state and federal has not been paid either. At this point, it appears that the company is millions in debt, has little or no capability to produce the helicopter they promised, and has enough legal problems to choke a horse. ANN continues to issue a not recommended advisory concerning this company, and strongly suggests those affected to contact the state attorney in Arizona to file complaints, because what we're seeing here looks suspiciously like fraud. We will keep you informed. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.